Hey guys, it's Mathel here once again, and to follow on from the last video of the Shrapnel Shot Doom Fletch uh, Pathfinder, we did take the life-based version through all of the endgame shit, um, except for Chiula Breach, that is, but we did do the Tier 16 Guardians, Shaper, and Uberit Siri, as well as um, a few other tidbits here or there, breaches and all that. And all in all, it performed pretty damn well. The DPS is certainly higher than I ever expected out of Shrapnel Shot, and the playstyle ends up being uh, pretty damn nice for Shrapnel Shot in general, needing only really a single... Uh, attack for both your A AoE and your single target, just, you know, sometimes having to swap in your early focus and slower proj, as opposed to the GMP. So the life-based version here um, that you see did take down just about everything, and it felt pretty good doing so. But one thing I will mention is I tried to make Siege Ballista a thing, as you can see on my toolbar, and uh, sometimes I try and place it and use it. All in all, it's pretty bad. It doesn't really do much, and it's fairly worthless. So were I to give you a recommendation right now, or build it again, I'd say wear a comb's heart and uh, forget an entire Siege Ballista setup altogether. Just wear a Combs Heart, gain about a thousand life, and then it makes the life-based version of this build actually pretty damn good and comfortable. Whereas otherwise, I capped out at about 5,500 life, and it was hard to get any more on this character without um, sacrificing a lot of the really good passives. So Siege Ballista, I tried to make a thing. It really isn't. Uh, forget about it. And instead, probably just wear a Combs if you're going to stick to the life based version. So to talk about the life based version, it's pretty damn good and it does have its own merits. The only real disadvantage it has over the CI based version of this build, which I'll show you fairly shortly, is the fact that you have to use a life flask. So that means we sacrifice one slot on our flask bar, which is a pretty big deal for a pathfinder, and that's ultimately quite a bit of our damage. But it's not that much of a, you know, drawback because the life-based character is a bit more comfortable to build initially and should overall be a cheaper setup in my opinion. But there is also a slight drawback of not having as large of a life pool because you'll have, you know, about 6,500 life with combs, let's just say, versus the CI version where I hit almost 8k ES. And that does mean a little worse for certain things. And the main culprit there is reflect damage. So reflect isn't a huge issue unless you are point blanking and shrapnel shotting something right in the face which happens occasionally when beyond monsters spawn at your feet and you don't get a chance to react at that point uh, reflect can be pretty bad and that's where you could one shot yourself so the more buffer for your health the better and the ES version that you see right now ends up having at least on my character 7.8 to 8k ES and that makes reflect one shots almost non-existent whereas with um, 5.5k life I'd probably die to reflect once a level something like that depending on how many beyond maps I'm doing and uh, how quick I can react to reflect so it does become kind of an issue that you hit so goddamn hard with a single attack that if something's right next to you and it's reflect, uh, the point blank goes off pretty huge and can definitely one-shot you. It's still doable as CI, but just a lot rarer, I should say. So this is the CI version. It made mapping quite a bit smoother, I'd say, just because I could have an extra flask slot and uh, be a bit more reckless with my life, I suppose, because I had a larger life buffer in the form of 7800 ES. Uh, the only real difference is I wasn't stun immune because I was using the 80% chance to avoid stun on boot enchant instead of the Chayula uh, neck, but would I go back and do it again to reorganize my um, resists to cap the Wise Oak Flask? I'd say it's worth doing the Chayula because you can see right here, especially with Temp Chains, I am just getting stunned so fucking hard and so often, and uh, it's really quite uncomfortable, whereas if you wore the Chayula amulet, you wouldn't have any issues with stun, and that makes surviving a whole lot easier. All in all, though, the DPS didn't feel too substantially different between the CI and the life-based versions. Um, as I mentioned, the 
flask is definitely something you get in the long term as well as the quicksilver as opposed to the life based version but it doesn't seem to affect the dps all that much at least not noticeably so between the two uh, sort of builds uh, aside from that i did get an extra jewel socket and some more crit multi so the dps should be better but it wasn't noticeably better as i said so this build um in, as the ci version i took down guardians another couple of times each of them uh did two or three shaper runs and something like four uber it siri runs it was a pretty smooth character overall but i will have to say that it obviously pales in comparison to barrage this is just a sort of different uh build play style i guess skill even but ultimately the passive tree is basically the same and if you have access to a dying sun and barrage helm enchant and maybe even an additional arrow quiver then you'll get infinitely more dps out of barrage because it just scales so much better right now but this definitely has a different sort of feel to it and definitely has its own merits because you don't really have to have two skills for example barrage definitely needs a lightning arrow or a ice shot to go with it or even a tornado shot whereas this it's just your one right click for everything and for me it actually was pretty fun overall and doesn't require the cost of the expensive shit from barrage but the ci version definitely does require some more expensive items than the life version so bear that in mind when trying to build it now we'll of course go over what the ci version um, is wearing real quick but it is basically the same build as the one i highlighted in the previous video just as an energy shield base wearing energy shield items and uh, the passive tree is the one I already showed you guys there's not too much else to really talk about or mention here um, beside the fact that you know I got another jewel um, this is one of my old jewels though and it's you know a wasted life roll doesn't really matter and then this is the other jewel i bought just trying to fill out some crit multi uh, besides that i tried to roll most of my own gear so i bought a shrapnel shot enchant um, got 370 es on this with some chaos spam well, actually that was a woe i believe um, so it can't get divine much higher just so you know uh, some gloves 200 es roughly some attack speed would go a long way if you can get some accuracy that'd be great too a belt try and roll some sort of crystal belt with maybe wed um maybe some energy shield or some flask nodes uh it became a bit of a bother trying to balance our flask as well as vinktas uh all again with a whole new setup because now we're energy shield based so i'll show you what i mean by that currently these are my unbuffed uh resists and then popping all my flasks i get 210 across the board um, that's with Vinktars and wise oak meaning i get 30 percent penetration to each element and then 15 percent uh, damage reduction to each element so it makes you quite a bit safer and hit quite a lot harder so the ci version does have that going for it too and it's only happening when the Vinktars is up which is almost always whenever we need it anyway if the Vinktars is down then uh, you just simply get bonuses to the cold and the fire as i mentioned the brown rot whalers i'm wearing have eight percent chance to avoid being stunned um honestly not really that worth it just wear an eye of chiula and then um get something else on your boots uh this you know amulet's okay this thing costs like 5k so it's not a really big deal to lose this for your damage slot especially when you get stun immunity instead so i wouldn't feel too bad wearing this but um by all means you could live life like i did it's just a bit annoying at times so try and get flat fizz across the board which is why we're wearing steel rings and a broadhead arrow um the steel rings they're pretty damn expensive to buy so i do pretty much always roll my own you buy a fresh steel ring and then slam some contempts on it and eventually you'll hit something pretty damn sweet so both of these were contempt crafted this one's especially nice um it's just a lot harder to get rolls without a contempt and it's really expensive to buy them yourself and then this regalia i got pretty lucky by putting like three chaos into and getting 870 yes so you can tell that um it's pretty hard to get good es on this type of build because we only have 140 percent on the tree which means this um 20 percent roll here if i had one over here and if i had one on my amulet they'd go a very long way to more es maybe like 8500 so if you can't really afford to get decent enough 
ES gear, like we're talking 800 plus regalia, you know, 350 over here, 200, 200, then it's not particularly worth going over the life version of this build. In any case, I think that's about all I'm really going to mention. Um, I do have to say we dropped uh, Ash to fit in Discipline instead, which isn't a big deal. Ash is mostly there for aesthetics and cleaning up just a few little extra monsters. But um, yeah, that's definitely another little downside from going CI as opposed to life. Overall, it is better though, I'd say, but um, I'll let you guys decide which one you wanna do. In the end, the noob text is right there if you wanna follow the build in the end. And uh, that's about it from me. Thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this character, and I'll see you next time.